Hello anatomy friends, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this video we will be discussing the parasympathetic innervation of the submandibular gland and its close neighbor the sublingual glands and all those smaller salivary glands in the oral cavity region. So those are salivary glands, recall. This discussion will include the source of those preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, so where those are originating from, which ganglion so one of those peripheral parasympathetic ganglia where they will synapse. And through what means do those postganglionic fibers reach both the submandibular and the sublingual glands? So that will be the focus of this video today. All right, so take a moment and I want you to try to remember which cranial nerve is the source of the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers destined for the parotid gland. So not what we are going to spend the majority of this video on, but review what you know about the parotid gland. Which one of the cranial nerves is going to, to innervate that? And hopefully you remember it's the glossopharyngeal nerve or cranial nerve 9. When speaking about the submandibular and sublingual glands, the source is not glossopharyngeal, but instead it will be the facial nerve or uh, cranial nerve 7. The facial nerve is another cranial nerve, like the glossopharyngeal, that is fairly complex in regards to multiple functions, as you can see over here. It is actually going to provide preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to two different types of glands. So not just the submandibular and sublingual glands, or those salivary glands, but also the lacrimal gland, which is going to produce tears. But our focus today will be on those salivary glands. And we are going to go through the steps that are mentioned on this particular chart, step by step. And then we'll come back to this chart at the end to kind of review. All right, the branch of the facial nerve that will have the pertinent preganglionic parasympathetic fibers for this session is the corda tympani. Love the corda tympani. That is a fun name. There are other fibers within the corda tympani, which, so there's going to be preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, and they're going to wrap, be wrapped up together with special sensory fibers, and these are going to play a role in terms of the special sense of taste, so going to be associated with the tongue. Specifically, it's going to provide that special sensory innervation to the tongue anterior to the valate papillae, which are specific papillae on the tongue, which house taste buds. So similar to what we did with the tympanic nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, uh, let's follow the parasympathetics to their target organ. The corda tympani will actually branch from the facial nerve before the bulk of the facial nerve exits the stylomastoid foramen. So, to be clear, this branch is going to occur bef uh, within the skull in the facial canal. And from here, the corda tympani will head toward the middle ear region, similar to that tympanic nerve. So it does not exit through the stylomastoid foramen. It is before that. The corda tympani will traverse the middle ear, and you can see it. Actually, it's, I think this is a pretty cool relationship. You can see it traversing between the malleus and the incus bone. So here's your malleus, and here is your incus. Uh, these are two of your ear ossicles, which are the smallest bones of the body, so associated with the middle ear. The corda tympani will make its way through the middle ear and will eventually exit the cranium of the skull via the petrotympanic fissure. And the petrotympanic fissure can be a little tricky to see. I always try to locate that mandibular fossa, which you can see here. And it is this long slit-like fissure that is going to be just posterior to that mandibular fossa. And once this corda tympani exits through the skull, through the petrotympanic fissure, it will be in what we refer to as the infratemporal fossa, which is a region deep to the masseter muscle, so in the deeper portions of the face. The corda tympani travels a little bit within that infratemporal, so this whole region right here is going to be referred to as the infratemporal fossa. And it will travel a little bit. Let me get my bearings. Here it is. It's going to travel a little bit within the infratemporal fossa before it will join up with the lingual nerve. As you can see right over here. So it's going to kind of dive deep to this and kind of 
enter into and join with the lingual nerve. The lingual nerve is headed towards the tongue in the oral cavity region because one of the major functions of the, the lingual nerve is to send sensory signals back to the central nervous system from the anterior portions of the tongue. So really that lingual nerve is covering the same territory as the cord and tympani in regards to the tongue. But recall, a cord of tympani is going to have special sensory fibers or taste fibers, whereas the lingual nerve is general sensory to the tongue. So say if you were pinching your tongue or you cut your tongue, those signals are going to be general sensory. So we have that cord of tympani hitchhiking with the lingual nerve. And um, those in this whole time, those cord of tympani fibers that are parasympathetic are preganglionic. So we've been preganglionic this whole discussion up until now, but it will make its way into this region to synapse in the submandibular ganglion. The ganglion will lie superior anterior to the deep part of the submandibular gland. So here's your submandibular, this is deep part of submandibular gland right here. Uh, you can also see it's, fairly, it's loosely associated with the lingual nerve, which you can see running right here. So kind of medial to the lingual nerve. And this is where those preganglionic parasympathetic fibers will synapse. From the ganglion, the postganglionic sympathetic parasympathetic fibers will head to their target organ, so those salivary glands in this region. And it will do so either by traveling near the surrounding vasculature, or it may even hitchhike again with the lingual nerve to get to a bit more distal areas. So that is how those postganglionic parasympathetic fibers are getting to the submandibular gland, the sublingual gland, and any of those smaller salivary glands in that region. So here is that nice review chart again. Cord of tympani is going to have those preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. They will make their way through the middle ear and will eventually exit the skull to get to the infratemporal fossa where it will join with the lingual nerve. The preganglionic parasympathetic fibers will synapse in the submandibular ganglion, and then the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers will travel the short distance to get to the sublingual and submandibular glands. So easy peasy, right? As always, take, it, uh, take your own time to review and focus in on those areas that are a little bit trickier to you then reach out to your colleagues or, of course, anatomy faculty, and we can discuss from there. We're always here to help. All right, let's go quickly go through a question here. The preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that will synapse in the submandibular ganglion originate from which cranial nerve? So a few key things in the stem that I hope you are looking at. So we're trying to think about preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. They are going to synapse in the submandibular ganglion and it is a cranial nerve. All right. So really, if you're looking at the answer choices, all of these are cranial nerves, so this isn't all that helpful in the stem. So let's focus on these two areas. All right, which ones of these answer stems have preganglionic parasympathetic fibers associated? Well, it is not the hypoglossal. There are no preganglionic parasympathetic fibers associated with the hypoglossal nerve, so that's not the correct answer. The other four options do have preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, so then we're going to really hone in on which ones uh, are going to synapse in the submandibular ganglion, and hopefully that leads you to A, or the facial nerve, being the correct answer. The glossopharyngeal parasympathetic fibers will synapse in the otic ganglion, so not the correct answer. Uh, whereas the oculomotor fibers will synapse in the ciliary ganglion. And the vagus does not does have important preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, but they will not synapse in any of those peripheral parasympathetic ganglia of the head. So this should wrap up uh, wrap us up regarding the parasympathetics in this session. Thank you for your time and attention.